off to Japan. So I'm in Japan finally and I'm tired because it's about 11.30 my time and it's 4.30 in the afternoon here the next day. So heading to customs. Hope they let me through. Anyway, I'm excited. I'll show you what I'm going to do later. All right, bye. Welcome to Japan. <laughs> Always had a draw to Japan even before. I mean, being a little kid, I wanted to eat sushi and I wanted to be a ninja. And I just love Japanese things. I don't know why. Um, I've always been drawn to Japanese art, just the Japanese aesthetic. So in tattooing, Japan is kind of the it's the sacred tattoo place on the planet because they're the ones that really were the first ones to make it the storytelling of you as the person and make it spiritual and make it um, really complicated art compared to all the indigenous people that would just do simple markings or branding, so to speak. Japan would tell stories and that happened hundreds of years before anyone else started. And so now the rest of the world's kind of catching up, um, not just in simple symbols but in full storytelling imagery so all that said as a tattooer japan is the ultimate for me so i've been drawn to it i always wanted to go and it took me about 10 years of tattooing before i went i went being invited to just participate in what was going on at shige's shop i mean i could have just bought a ticket and flown to japan there's something different about being invited. Oh my gosh. Is that a real skull right there? Yeah. Oh. <sighs> wow. I made it. Then once I accepted the invitation, he said, if you want, maybe you can tattoo while you're here. I can set up some interviews with magazines. And then I asked if I could get tattooed, and he said no. He said he was too busy and that I was just coming to visit. Most important thing is the relationship. So then, he really serious? Of course, I agree. Uh, I don't remember, but I said no, right? But <laughs> it's a no. Uh, I mean, it's no, no, it's no, it's a uh, yes. If you will it yes, maybe ask more. The first time I met you, I was a kid, 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 I was aバイクアスタトゥーを見る機会がたくさんありまして、まあ、そこからこうもともと僕がメカニックなので、えー、ちっちゃい入れ墨、まあ、そういうやっぱりちょっとかっこいいみたいなやっぱりそういうところからあの興味を持って始めたのが一番最So when I got there and I, I was overwhelmed with the culture and the way everything was, I can't explain how enamored I was with everything. 
from the furniture to the way they drove to the food, the buildings, the way they dressed, everything just completely overwhelmed my senses. And I could not stop filming. I couldn't stop taking pictures of everything. I couldn't stop uh, being amazed. Um, we're in Chinatown in Japan. That's funny to me. That looks like LA. There's so many, so many Japanese people. <laughs> we spent a day together just going to gardens and stuff and talking and I didn't realize it, but he was consulting with me, finding out who I was so he could put it into the tattoo. I thought I was just getting a Hanya mask and bamboo on my back. But he was asking me throughout the day, why? And he speaks at the time very little English, so I had to say things over and over and I had to really simplify my words. So very little talking on my part and a lot of introspection, a lot of amazement. And then that day where he's asking me what I wanted on my back and why, there were these slow conversations where I would say it and then he would look off and nod and say, hmm, okay, okay. And then if I asked him a question, he would always answer, it's difficult to explain. He spent two days drawing my back piece after measuring, you know, taking a template of my back on tracing paper. I'm working, and in the meantime, I'm watching him tattoo his clients. I'm t we're tattooing right next to each other in two stations in his tiny little studio in Yokohama. And I'm watching these people get tattooed in a brutal way. It looked, I know what tattoos feel like when they hurt, but these looked brutal. Like there was more blood than normal. It was just intense. And I was getting more and more terrified. And I'm watching these people stoically endure sessions that I knew I wasn't capable of. I am scared for tomorrow. Because I'm going to get tattooed tomorrow. And I'm very nervous because I can't find my samurai spirit. Tomo, um, where, where can I get a samurai spirit? Eh? Where? 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 Where do I go get a samurai spirit? Convenient. Huh? Seven <laughs> Eleven. He said Seven Eleven. Thanks. So as it got closer, he drew up the design, and uh showed it to me and it wasn't exactly what I expected and I'm realizing now that this is the first step in surrender is to be a tattooer and an artist myself and know what I want it to look like but then to surrender that to someone that's not me to a different artist with a different mindset and a different approach and so the way I would have designed it was nothing like the way he designed it and I tried to steer him at that point. I remember looking at it after he spent two days drawing it, and it wasn't what I wanted exactly. And I'm going, well, I kind of wanted it like this or like that. I kind of want it like Tomo's piece. It's you know, bigger and like this. 
And he looks at me and he says, Tomo's piece was five years ago. This is now. And I didn't know what that meant at the time. I know what it means now. But that was that first moment of surrender. Like, ah, oh, I got to let him do it how he wants it. And, and I, I'm faced with this. You know, I'm standing there in his studio going, am I able to surrender? Listening was a big lesson for me. When I when I come here, uh, listening to Jeff, listening to my body, being able to listen to the, the words in my head, the voices in my head that say, why are you doing this? What are, this pain is real, it hurts, you know? All this effort coming here, all this effort in your mind, in your body, in your life, to get you to this place, where then you really have to surrender. You have to get on that table, you have to trust that person, and you have to trust your body and your mind for eight hours, four hours, six hours, whatever. You're constantly in, in that struggle, in that mindset, in that release. It's begun to be said about Jeff that he uncovers tattoos that are you know, waiting below the surface. Maybe they've been there your whole life. Um, and he brings them to the fore. For that to happen, to go through a process like that, it's a trust fall. You have to trust yourself that you are the person to go through it. You have to trust that you've found the right person to facilitate it. And ultimately, for it to come to fruition, you have to let go. You have to, you have to surrender. I think my back piece was the first time I, I was like, yeah, this is, this is surrender. I'm, I am learning how to submit to someone else and myself. And that correlated in my relationship with my husband, my relationship with my friends, learning that give and take, learning who I am, also drawing boundaries. I'm this person, this is who I am, and I can, I can handle it. Like, I can handle who I am. And, I'm gonna respect you and who you are. I used to be a very controlling person, want things this way, that way, want this person to react this way, and going through this process has taught me to give that up. It's, you surrender that and let it all lay how it may, <laughs> maybe, you know? I never really understood those things until I started this process. That moment of surrender is, has been a huge teacher for me. It's how I get through the pain. It's how I get gifted with this art because it comes from a collaboration from someone else. Uh, I know I will get the best work of art if my artist is invested in it, and I was lucky enough that he is. Um, but none of that None of this would have happened if I wasn't able to let go. sitting there in my first session going, I just committed to 10 sessions minimum that I don't feel capable of doing. And every single moment of it was way worse than I thought. I'm naked and Shige is getting ready to make a stencil on my back. 
<laughs> um, got about three hours down, and uh, we're gonna take a little break and then do some shading. You know, they, they talk about fight or flight and wanting to either fight it or make it stop, run away from it. That was every single breath for nine hours. And when I got done with that first session, I got my left leg, my left ribs, my whole back outlined. I knew at that point that I wasn't able to do it. Inside I'm going, I can't do this. Uh, I just, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not strong enough. I can't do it. Hi, Jim. Hi. <laughs> um. <laughs> How was it today? <laughs> today? It was nice. Very painful. Ready? <laughs> I was there 11 hours total. And I'm still wearing my towel and I'm trying to tell him thank you for this. And I kept crying and I, it was embarrassing. I, I could not control it. I couldn't control my body. And Japanese people don't cry in public or in front of someone. They go privately to do that. Shige's gonna put a bandage on me and dry my tears. <laughs> I went home after that trip and I spent the next six months telling myself that I, I can't do it. Fearing the next session, I'm going, I, I don't know, I, can't, I won't be able to do this, I can't do this. I don't know how to do this. <sighs> and then the next session, it, was the worst session of my life. It, it only lasted six and a half hours because I couldn't, I couldn't function. He outlined the back of my hamstring and it came up my ribs for the first four hours. And then we took a little, a few minute break and then he started shading my right ribs, my left ribs. And it, I couldn't function. Like my, uh, my body would like convulse. It sounds funny, but I couldn't help but from like kind of grunting. So every time he'd pull, he'd do a, a pull, I would uh, grunt, I was like, Ugh, you know, and just kind of bear down and I was fighting it so hard. And he finally got so frustrated. It should have been about eight hour session and at six and a half hours, he just said, that's it, we're done. And he stopped and he cleaned up. I could tell he was frustrated and I, I'm apologizing. And then um, he went into his office for a while, probably to like calm down. And um, I'm just standing there in my row, in my towel, feeling out of it, feeling weak and feeling really embarrassed and just going, why, why can't I do this? You know, I do this to people all day, every day. Then he came in and um, he was just, he did a photograph and then he was putting ointment on my back and, I, and it hurt so bad, everything hurt. And all of a sudden I started feeling woozy and I'm standing there and I'm, I'm going, I go, Shige, I gotta, I gotta sit down. And he's all, patience, be patient. And I said, no, I, I gotta sit down. And then all of a sudden I, the room went black and I passed out and I'm naked. You know, I, 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 fell, I fall down totally naked. He grabs me and then I come to and he just puts me onto the table. And he checks my eyes. He's like looking in my eyes. So I used to stay here, stay here. And he covered me and all of a sudden all this compassion that he does not show during the tattoo. During the tattoo, it's brutal. All of a sudden he just, all this compassion just came out and he took care of me and he laid me down and I ended up laying there for like 45 minutes. They brought me like little cookies and stuff and felt so dumb. Well, I had another session scheduled four days later on the same trip. So my first session was six months in between. Second session and third session are four days apart. So we get done and he says, okay, during your next session, Robert Hernandez from Spain, he's, who's like one of my mentors and heroes, in tattooing, he was gonna be there for my next, that session, he's gonna be tattooing. And Shige looks at me and he goes, when Robert's here, no screaming. And I was just like, I'm all defensive and insecure and I go, I wasn't screaming, I was grunting and I didn't mean to. But anyway, it was just one of those things. From then on, for the next four days, I full on just told myself, you will do this, you can do this. And I went into this positive affirmation that I didn't know. I was like, the only thing I could do because I didn't want to go through that again. And I never made another sound during a 
any of my any of the rest of my sessions. So that was the only session that I caved. And again, retrospective, I learned things from that. Surrendering to the pain rather than fighting it. As I'm being tattooed, aside from the other things I, I think of, um, I commonly just think I'm going to just, um, I, I kind of joke with myself in the head that I'm just going to stop and get up. Um, and I do that frequently throughout the day and it kind of amuses me to keep going because <laughs> the pain is so, so terrible <laughs> sometimes. I'm proud that I can do this. I'm proud that I can endure um, several days. Um, I wouldn't say I'm a masochist, but it's more or less this is a means to an end, the pain to getting the look. But I always approach it with kind of an attitude of thankfulness, you know, thankful that I have the means to be here, thankful that Jeff has the time and the interest in taking on my, my projects. Um, so I think that, that helps a lot because when you're just feeling terrible from the pain or, you know, questioning why you're putting yourself through this, you have to remind yourself, yeah, you know, it's not every day that I can be in this unique position, so be thankful. And also I think the determination, kind of the, the willpower to, that it has to be done. You know, once you start on something, you can't really leave it unfinished. At least to me, with tattoos, it's kind of silly. So just trying to arrive at the finishing point. Although these days I feel like with it being near, I'm kind of sad that eventually I'll run off real estate for, for Jeff to work on, you know, and then, I mean, we could do a second layer or something, but, you know, I do think about that. After all 12 sessions were done, three years later, it was 101 hours total. I logged my hours on my back piece. And, and then all the other stuff that went in between, the meals that I had there, the, all the people I tattooed over the three years, and all the experiences I had, going to temples and going to the gardens, and the shrines are Shinto, which is ancient Japanese, belief system of it's the universe it's all one energy it's we're all part of it we come from it we're aware of us and it and then we go back into it in every way physically molecularly all of it um, I understand Shintoism on a, on a gut level because it makes sense you know you can look at trees and how they cycle you can look at how a seed becomes a tree that makes seeds that die and then reborn as trees again and that it comes and if you could look at that from a, the far enough away in time that you saw it like it's breathing those trees born you know growing and dying and growing and dying it would look like the forest is breathing that's Shintoism to my understanding you know and so shrines are just that you know when you go to a Shinto shrine and you look in the doorway, at the back of it is a mirror, a disc, because you're looking at your reflection. And that's what you bow to, you know. So in this one place called Kamakura, there's the Shinto shrine, which is, part of it is these caves that they built. And they're built low, so you have to bow down. You have to stay bowed while you're in it. And we walked in there, and there's a, a candle burning, and you offer some coins and you take a candle and you write your name on it and then you write a prayer. And I'm just going, I don't know how to pray in, in Buddhist or Shinto or anything. So I wrote, I wrote my name and I wrote peace. And it wasn't for anyone else, I just want peace of mind, you know, peace in, within the struggle that's in me. And I remember putting that on the, you know, in the thing and you, you're supposed to put it in front of these different statues that they grant different things. Someone 
Something might be for creativity or for health or for money or whatever. And since I didn't know, it doesn't matter. Like the universe knows. And it comes down to that intention. So that's where I started learning things like that. Like it doesn't matter how it's perceived by someone else. It matters what your intention is from you. All these little changes that have happened over the years of going there and getting tattooed and then bringing that back with me and then implementing that into my interaction with my clients and how I tattoo them and letting them struggle through the surrender process. Jeff meets you in the middle. When he was having his interview and he was talking about when he was Shige, I, I understood what he was saying. Like, yeah, you see it this way, they see it that way, but to find that person who you can surrender to and trust and say, yeah, they know, they have my best interest. I don't see this whole picture. I don't see the whole thing. My feet, big time surrender for me because we've gone over this one foot three times and I was like, I gotta let it go. <laughs> I don't see what Jeff sees, but I trust what what he's doing, and that I think that's a big a big thing. If you can have a conversation with your artist and you see that they are following you and you're following them, and there's that that sense that you understand one another, it's a big deal and very important. The tattoos are nice, but they're almost like just this byproduct of what I've gained as a result of this relationship with Jeff. You know, coming out here for the past four years and getting tattooed eight, nine hours a day. Um, I enjoy that time spent with him. It's a lot of times, a lot of times it's uncomfortable, but we have good conversations. I see him joking with his colleagues. Um, it's just, it's a beautiful environment. Um, He's offered to come out to Hong Kong and tattoo me, but I, there's something for me about making the 12 hour flight over here and then driving down from Portland and getting tattooed in that special room in the back. You know, it's, especially, it's, I've seen photos of it since I first knew of his work. And so it's when I first, I remember the first time I arrived and just finally I'm here. It's, it's just, yeah, that, it's that, once again, that sense of gratitude, but also maybe kind of fulfillment, contentment that, you know, wow, it's, it's, the realization is really happening. I've arrived at where I wanted to be. Um, but I mean, all this was before the actual journey itself and the journey itself, I, it's really nothing I expected or hoped for, just surrendering and allowing where it would take me. In the end, having this tattoo on my back really changed me and I never look at it's not, I don't look at my tattoo I'm, it's not like I'm gonna get naked and just like stare at it I just never see it um, and I don't like showing people because I don't like getting naked in front of people so it, it became something that that image that's on me is a relic that was built over time from all these experiences. So it's the reminder of the experiences. And it is the reminder perpetually of what I've learned. To endure something by choice gives you the ability to endure things that you might not have technically chosen. So everything's a choice. Those moments, those revelations or realizations that um, I didn't know her there, and they have nothing to do with what, what my back looks like. It all comes from the experience of what it, what I went through to get it. And that's what I like sharing with people, and that's why, it's not like I want to make a bunch of money off someone like, oh, you got to get a big tattoo. It's just you don't get those, those lessons from a little tattoo. It's such a, such a conscious decision and carries such a message that you're deciding to do this, and then it's a permanent message that you're sending anyone that sees you, the world. You're saying, yeah, this is what I decided to do. 
for whatever my reason was. And then you have to surrender that decision to someone else so that they can be your voice and they can say your thing for you. And then that interaction, it is powerful. Even on a trinket tattoo, even a little thing, it is still that process. But there's something that goes so much deeper when you get into the multiple session, large scale surrendering of your whole body. Yeah, I started off wanting to get a tattoo. And I wanted to be authentic in that I wanted to get a Japanese style tattoo from a Japanese master in Japan. In the end, it just changed my entire life. It changed my career, changed my perspective on life. It changed me spiritually, it changed me psychologically. It transformed me on levels that I can't even put into a conversation, but they unfold through other things. I find it coming out in my work. I find it coming out in the music that I listen to, in the way I cook my food at home and put it on the plate because of all those things that have inspired me that there, you can just dump something on a plate or you can place it on the plate and make it look aesthetic because you deserve to take in something that's beautiful. You can grab a coffee to go and drink it fast as you're like rushing down the street or you can take five minutes and stop and just drink your cup of coffee. And the world's not gonna like fall apart. <laughs> you know, you don't have to be in that rush. I learned that in Japan. That's when I really found that that's what I feel like I was meant to do. And it's not that I was meant to make big tattoos so people could see what I'm doing, but that I was meant to do that so that people could discover who they were so that my clients can discover what they're capable of. Partially enduring it, and then the other part is surrendering it. Who would have thought that getting my back tattooed would change my entire life, but it has. Uh, I just finished session number 10. feel great. And Shige is great. He's a master. <laughs> master touch. I love my tattoo and I'm so thankful. Thank you.